Hey everybody. What do you think about my new uh, rain hat? It's not really, but isn't this kind of ridiculous and amazing? Don't you wish you could like build this out? You could build this out, like if you were a make your own gear person, what about a, an umbrella hat? Think about it, Dyneema and carbon fiber stays umbrella hat. I've just revolutionized the world. Hey everybody, my name is Grimace. You're watching the Bespoke Woodsman. On this channel, I talk about hiking, backpacking, backpacking gear. If those kinds of things interest you, click subscribe, click the notification bell. We'd love to have you along. Today, I'm going to talk about rain gear, uh, specifically the kind of rain gear I use, and then also I'll talk a little bit about other kinds of rain gear. As most of you know, uh, I do the majority of my hiking and backpacking in Southern California, where we don't really have to worry much about rain, especially this year where our snowpack is down and it looks like we're headed back toward drought conditions, um, unless we get some storms. But when I was on my Trans Catalina Trail uh, hike, I got hit by what was called a, a, a bomb cyclone. Uh, which was this convergence of all these storms and it was just a lot of rain and I found out very quickly that my current system while it works for most of my three season needs is not super ideal. So I've put a lot of time and energy and, and effort into sort of revamping my three season uh, rain gear. That said, when there's no rain called for in the forecast this is still my go-to. This has been, this is what I wore on the Trans Catalina Trail. This is what I've worn a lot of times. It goes with me on every single trip. This is the Outdoor Research Helium 2. The Helium 2 is extremely popular and for good reason. It is an extremely lightweight uh, shell. It comes in right around six ounces. I think mine is 6.2. I'll put that at the bottom here. Um, and I wear a size large, a uh, size extra large. I do have a large, but I found that because you're wearing this over all of your other layers, it's really, I think, best to size up. And uh, especially with this, it just seems to run a little small. So I did pick the uh, extra large up. This color is called Pumpkin. My favorite color, and this is always true, is whatever's on sale. So I got this at a pretty good discount. This is a nice uh, uh, jacket. It's got, it's got one pocket with a zipper. I wish that the zip went up instead of down because when it's up here, especially if you're not super careful to close it all the way, you've got a gap here um, that rain can get through. I don't love that. Uh, it does, you know, it's okay. And it also has a, it's, it has a hood with uh, an adjustable uh, draw cord on the back here, uh, shock cord on the back here. So um, it's got a little bit of a bill also, so you can wear it out. I still recommend wearing it with a hat uh, to keep rain off your face. It's also got a drawstring uh, shock cord at the bottom to cinch in the waist. No pockets, although it does have one pocket on the inside that the jacket actually folds itself into, but when you're wearing it, you can use this to hold uh, your phone or something that you would need to. I have never used it for that reason, but I've always looked, when I've worn it, the few times I've worn it, I've looked at it and thought, oh, that would be a purpose for that. So this is again the Outdoor Research Helium 2. I'm not here to promote this jacket, I'm just saying this is what I personally use. I mentioned that I had gone in search of a more robust, sort of uh, fully featured jacket. Um, I picked up, again, um, I picked up the Rab Kinetic uh, shell. Now this is a little bit better than the Outdoor Research. It's got, again, a full hood with a, with a visor. Um, it's actually got a piece of Velcro back here that you can use to adjust it. It fully zips all the way up. It's got the chest pocket. It's got another chest pocket. Um, I'm sorry, those aren't chest pockets. Those are actually hand pockets. They're just really big. Um, so this is pretty new to me. Um, I've worn it a little bit. I've tested it out. It's a little heavier than the um, uh, Outdoor Research Helium 2 but uh, I just think it's a little more stable. I think I would much prefer living in this if I was in extended rain again, because the Trans Catalina Trail, again, it taught me that like, I really, you really, once, when you know you're gonna be in rain, you just should better prepare for it. So this is a little heavier. It's not the most, again, the most robust uh, rain shell in the world, but I think it gives me a nice, I really liked the balance between the weight and the protection that it offered. So, 
This is the again the Rab is the manufacturer R A B. Kinetic. When I first started backpacking, I went in search of just any jacket. And that's my advice to you too, is you probably already own a jacket or you can get a fairly lightweight shell. You don't need to invest a lot of money. Um, I just came up with this Columbia Poration jacket. I've had this for a few years. I got it, like I said, it was my first backpacking jacket, uh, rain shell. It served me very well. It's a little heavier than I like to carry now, but I got it on sale through, I think the REI outlet. Um, but it was just extremely inexpensive and it still works out great. It's, still got, it's got the Velcro on the back. It's got a little hood. Um, it's got pit zips. Uh, so that's exactly what it sounds like is it's ventilation. Um, so you can, you can let it breathe where it won't get wet under your armpits to increase circulation. It's got pockets and uh, a little drawstring uh, shot cord at the bottom. It's got a mesh liner, so it just breathes a lot better than, um, than the other jackets, but again, it's heavy. Um, so again, this isn't necessarily what I would wear now, but it did the trick, and so I think that's the lesson, is like, go to like Salvation Army, go to an outlet store, go to a thrift store, and just find something fairly lightweight. The other thing a lot of backpackers use I don't personally, but they use just the frog togs. Uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's just a frog togs poncho. You just throw it on. It's not very uh, robust, like it's not very durable, but it's so much cheaper than everything else that you can just replace it as necessary um, and you're still probably coming out ahead. I don't use it personally. Um, I don't know why, I don't really have a reason, but it's a way to go. The other thing a lot of people like to do or like to use is um, just a large poncho. Some people have like it serves as a ground cloth and as a poncho or as a tarp and a poncho. I, to me it's a little, I don't know that I'm that guy yet, sort of the engineer approach. I don't know that I'm that guy yet, but it's some really, there's some really cool products out there. So not to dismiss, not to take away from those because they are pretty darn neat. The other thing I brought on my Trans Catalina Trail trip uh, that I used to bring on all of my trips actually is this. You've seen these, it's a pack cover. It's just got an elasticized, uh, it's like a fitted sheet and it just you throw it on over your pack. They come in usually very bright colors and it basically just keeps rain from getting into your pack. Some obvious downsides to this is rain can't get into your pack but neither can you. Also, it is sort of a one-size-fits-all, which didn't bother me, but it is it is something to think about where if you have a particularly large pack, maybe this doesn't fit it. If you have a particularly small pack, maybe this is too much. But also, you're going to be, first of all, it lets sweat in also. It doesn't do anything to stop sweat. And the other thing is, uh, because you know everything's gonna be dripping, so you've got the rain coming from this side, and that's great, but you've also got water dripping down the back of your neck, dripping down, you know, your back, and that's likely to get in because it can't seal the the front of the back or the back of the backpack rather. So this is useful though if you just want to have something along in case you get caught in a rainstorm that you didn't expect. I will probably not bring one ever again because I now have a waterproof backpack and uh, something that I'm about to show you. But this is still a really nice piece to have. The thing that I've gotten that replaces that pack liner that goes around the outside is a pack liner that goes on the inside. So this is called Nilo Flume. It's really big. Nilo Flume. Um, you can also just use a trash compactor bag. A lot of people just use that. I like these. I got them really inexpensively. You can get a bunch of them really cheap. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. But this is a waterproof liner that goes inside of your bag. Literally just put it in your bag and you pack everything into this. Everything that needs to be waterproofed anyway, which a lot of people just do their entire bag. I leave some things on top just to make it a little easier to get to them. But Nilo Flume pack liner, you can't, you can't go wrong. Another important piece of any weatherproofing system is going to be a dry bag. So this is a dry bag, this is a Z-Pax dry bag. I've got lots of different dry bags. This is uh, designed to roll up. You want to make sure you have enough room in it to roll it three times and clip it. 
and anything inside of here is going to stay dry. Um, this is useful for like your electronics, any toiletries, anything that you don't want to get wet. This will keep them really safe. Uh, I don't necessarily put everything in here, but I do like to have my electronics in particular protected. Uh, some people like to put their quilts in a larger dry sack. I, I go back and forth on that. I, I really like having my quilt free and loose, and once it's in the Nyla flume anyway, it's probably okay, but if I was going through some like big storm and I knew I was going through some big storm, I might consider, or if I had some big fords maybe, like fording rivers, I, I might consider a dry bag just for my quilt, just because I get real nervous and I pack my fears a little bit, so, uh, but a dry bag. One thing I own that I don't really use, or I haven't used yet, is rain pants. Um, some people use rain skirts, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's just sort of a kilt that goes around your waist and protects you from water from getting wet in your, you know, hip area, in your groin. Um, these pants, they're long pants. They fit over your hiking pants, your hiking shorts. They've got pockets. Um, drawstring cord. These ones are the REI Co-op pants, but lots of different people make these. Uh, again, it's usually a wide leg, so it fits over your boot. And then it's got a Velcro strap, but it also unzips, so you need to fit it over your boot. Again, I would only wear this in a if I knew I was getting a lot of rain. Uh, particularly on like that Cat Catalina Trail video, I probably would have worn it this. But I'm not against it. If I was just hiking and not backpacking, I think this would be super useful. What I generally do instead is I just wear running shorts. And running shorts dry really fast. That's what they're built to do. That's why I don't necessarily feel like I need to protect my, my bottom half. Is because if it gets wet, it's just going to dry. So I don't. I just don't spend as much time worrying about it as some other people do. Sort of a more traditional approach where you're going to want rain pants. And the thing that goes with rain pants is gaiters. What gaiters are, are protective uh, coverings that go over your shins, basically, that keep water from going into your boots. So this kind of goes, it drapes over the toe of your boot, and um, your leg goes in it kind of like this, and then your foot comes out this side, and it protects you from rain. These are really old. I've had these a very long time. I don't remember the last time I've put them on. <laughs> um, but this can be a nice, these are mountain hardware. This can be a really nice uh, piece of equipment, especially if you're carrying like boot boots, like leather, like heavy boots. Uh, you're not going to want to get those wet because they're never going to dry. One of the upsides, again, of using trail runners is, again, that they dry really fast. But your socks, a bit of a more mixed bag. So, you know, this is some something that could help keep those warm, uh, keep your feet warm, keep your feet dry. If you don't want to necessarily use waterproof socks, I don't have waterproof socks to show you. But that is a way that some people like to go if they're hiking um in in cold con wet conditions last but not least rain mitts so there are a couple of different kinds of rain mitts these are actually made by a company called raid light these are called they're called mp plus mitts and if you're wearing especially if it's cold and wet say it's cold and you need to wear gloves so you've got liner gloves on and, but you need to keep those warm. Um, we throw these guys on over them. Uh, you could probably see the initial problem. So there's just not much dexterity, right? You're not gonna be able to do much. You're certainly not gonna be able to use your phone, nothing like that. But these will keep your gloves dry, your liner gloves dry. It's an extra sort of barrier, extra sort of layer of protection. You know, especially, you, you wear your sleeves down, you can do so much to protect your hands, but at the end of the day, you know, they can still get macerated, they can still prune up, which is what that means. Um, you can still have problems, especially if it's cold. So rain mitts can be your best friend. And they look like a giant lobster. 
I don't know. And as I indicated at the top, some people do carry an umbrella. I don't carry an umbrella. I think it's kind of interesting though. I'm not against it. I think it would be more for sun than for rain, especially in a heavier storm. Um, but something else to think about is, is an umbrella. So those should hopefully give you some ideas if you're starting to build your kit, thinking about what do I need for rain protection. I would say if you are wearing pants, if you're wearing anything but like quick drying running shorts, I would encourage you to get some rain pants or a rain skirt. I would also encourage you if you're wearing heavier boots, uh, larger like mountaineering boots, anything like that, to get some gaiters to keep water from getting into your boots. I would also encourage you, you no matter what you're hiking in, to get a rain shell like the Helium 2 or the Rab Kinetic, or there are a lot of different brands. Um, I'll put some ideas in the description because um, I don't want, I don't know, no one's paying me and I don't want to like lead you to like the, the gear choice because everyone's a little bit different. You're going to have different needs, different wants, different likes than I have. I really like the Helium 2. It's been a godsend to me, but you know, a rain shell is a rain shell and hopefully you never have to use it, but if you do, you're going to want to be protected. So maybe you're going to be a frog togs. Maybe you're going to be someone who really takes to another item. It's okay. I think that's it. So if you had any satisfaction out of this video, I hope you'll click the thumbs up button. Uh, if you didn't like it, please click thumbs down so I can just kind of know how to cater my to my audience. I would love if you would leave a comment below. Tell me what kind of rain gear do you use? Do you carry rain pants, rain skirt, anything like that? Is there anything I forgot? Leave it in the comments below. Meanwhile, click subscribe, click the notification bell, and hey, let's do this again sometime.